This constant causing of death is disturbing, O.L. said later. The real cause, of course, is the primitive brain, the primitive nature of their brains, but still. Yes, still, I said. It was two days later, and we were sitting around respecting what the General Milliken had termed a respectable period of mourning. Look, this is going to be a very disturbing to the nation, he said as uniformly dressed other life removed the president's body. We're going to have to have a, a big funeral, call in heads of state from all over the world, control the media and all that. Look, can you guys just back off a little? Maybe go park behind the moon or something. It would be a big help. We can do that, O.L. said, and consider it our duty to do so. But um, if the president is dead, who do I speak with now? I need to speak to your leader. We will have a new president. Our system provides for that. Our, our vice president automatically becomes the president. Vice president? O.L. turned to me as he was unfamiliar with the word. I quickly checked the data. We were gathering on the other life's language, found the information, and conveyed it to our leader, who then addressed General Milliken. This person currently presides over the degrading and the immoral? I don't want to talk to someone who presides over the degrading and the immoral. For the first time, the General Milliken's face became less than ugly. Well, he presides over the Senate, if that's what you mean. A joke out of season! I can tell by the timbre of your voice. Why, in the dread of decay, would you tell a joke out of season? Look, what do you want? To talk to your leader. Is that too complex an idea for you to understand? Take your morning time. We regret this death as we regret all that have preceded it. We have met no harm. We are simply travelers gathering data who came upon this phenomenon of other life. We are curious. We only wish to know. Come back in a week, then. Do you know what a week is? O.L. looked at me, and I nodded. I will come back to this building in a week. Have a presider available. All right. Look, give me some hint. The diplomats will want to know what we can do to make you comfortable. I am not uncomfortable. No, I mean, well, what does a bubble eat and drink? What? Rotting meat? Are unseasonable jokes part of your lineage? Where is the joke? You're a damn bubble. There's not much in our protocol about hosting a damn bubble. Our leader gave the General Milliken his look. Wasted, of course, as the General Milliken could not see it. So O.L. turned to us and gave us a variation on the look, one inviting us to share his disgust over the other life, ignorance. He then turned back to the control bubble. You are ignorant of a fact. The bubble that you see is a mere communications device. It is not corporeal. It is not I. Then we have actually killed none of your kind. Of course not. I, uh, I'm happy about that. Do not state as truth something which is not. Oh, well, is very perceptive. Realization of that fact changed the topography of General Milliken's face. The other life week passed, and we moved our life ship back into position in orbit around the other life's planet. Our leader, she, our assistant leader, and I were shoved off through the loading doors in a here-to-there bubble. To view a descent on the control bubble is fascinating. One can quickly analyze many things. However, to be in a bubble, to descend yourself, is, in a very odd turn of language, elevating. She, our assistant leader, despite straps and restraints, grabbed me and squeezed. Our leader giggled almost nonstop, and I gasped <laughs> 53 times. Soon we were over Washington, D.C. Crowds of other life filled the passageways between the buildings and crowded onto the tops of those buildings and pointed at us. We floated finally to the president's building, and we came down on some cropped green vegetation. Suddenly we heard music. It was not hummed but was played on instruments that jangled slightly. Still, it was not completely unpleasant. Besides the musicians, there were rows of uniformly dressed weapon bearers, but as they were obviously being ceremonial instead of belligerent, and as they were hard to look upon, being rows of ugly, we paid very little attention to them. 
Two of the uniforms started to roll out a long red boat of cloth, bringing it right up to the edge of our here to there bubble. Then we could see the General Milliken walking along it, accompanied by a few others. As the outside sheen of our here to there bubble is opaque, the other life could not see in, but they stood there trying nonetheless. Where's the damn hatch? We heard the General Milliken ask of the others, who of course had no answer. This carpet better damn well be in the right place. Uh-oh, O.L. said. You think this carpet is some sort of weapon or a trap? I considered that, but it fit none of the facts. It was unlike any weapon we had observed, and we had observed so many. Still, we were not sure we yet had the other life's trust. There is a small possibility. Should we move the bubble? No, she, our assistant leader, said. Look, the General Milliken and the others are standing on it. How could it be a trap? I think it is some small tribute being paid to us. Why? What have we done to deserve it? O.L. asked, quite rightly. We have arrived, she, our assistant leader, answered. We arrived a week ago and they tried to destroy us. <laughs> this is different. This is not such a shock for them. Open and exit orifice and let us greet them. Right in front of this carpet, I suppose. She smiled. I do not know why. It is my feeling that that would be appropriate and would bring them some pleasure. Well, you should know about that, O.L. said as he opened the bubble, revealing us for the first time to the General Milliken and the other lice. Their jaws dropped. That is exactly physically what happened. We were not sure if this was some sort of other life greeting or not, but felt it prudent to drop our jaws as well. <laughs> well, 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 welcome uh, th th this way, oh, oh, please, the General Milliken barely said. This is very strange, Well whispered to me. Do our bubbles have some property that smooths out halting speech? Not to my knowledge. We follow the General Milliken and the others down the red carpet towards the President's building. All along the way, as we came closer to still others, they all greeted us with a dropping of the jaw salute. <laughs> Out of courtesy, we continued to reciprocate. <laughs> Eventually, it became quite annoying, and not to mention slightly painful. Soon, we were inside the building, more of the other life along the path saluting us until we came into a large, impressive abode. We were gestured to stand at a particular point. Then someone rather loudly announced, Ah, oh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, 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 the President of the United States. Musicians blared music on annoying instruments, and a man smaller than the General Milliken with a head full of gray hair entered with a determined and somewhat impatient walk that slowed as he neared us, matching the slow and measured dropping of his jaw. And then he stated for all to hear, Holy shit! You're fucking gorgeous! <laughs>